Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here, back with another episode. And as you can tell from the title, we are back to the setup game. This video is all around productivity. I know that we are probably going a bit crazy, staying a bit isolated, working from home. This video is all around tips, tricks, and ideas how to up your productivity around your setup, and of course the tech behind it to help you do so. Let's get to the main piece, which is the center point of today's setup. It's of course the monitor, which is my latest edition. It is the LG 32U. UN880 ultrafine display ergo. And I'm sure we've all seen ultrafine monitors from LG. It was actually one of my last projects, one of my last traveling trips at the end of last year. I flew out to one of your guys' places in LA to set that up. This year in 2020 though, they've made the big upgrade to make it more ergo, ergonomical. I caught a quick glimpse at CES. It has a ball and socket head on the back. So you can twist, swivel, completely manipulate the monitor to whatever your setup needs. And my favorite look for this monitor when you set it up is to actually place it a bit more off center. I think it looks more unique. It looks dope, kind of like the piece of box art that it comes in. And having it a bit off to the side gives you so much extra free space underneath. It keeps the setup looking super minimal. So as long as your desk isn't cluttered with too many extra things, it should look honestly perfect. A bunch of different settings depending on the width of your table. The one I'm currently using is from Rove Concepts. I'll leave links down below. But if you have an Ikea setup or an Ikea desk, a kitchen countertop, which is the famous Ikea hat that a lot of you rock, handles it totally fine and should be able to work within any desk setup that you have. Once you do have it settled on a spot, like I mentioned, it's got that full 360 degrees of motion with that ball and socket mount on the back. Super useful for coders, photographers, someone that needs a display in a portrait orientation, and just awesome for sharing content on your display. I know that we all are stuck working at home, but when you do get back into the workplace, awesome for sharing content around a table. It's got great viewing angles just because you can manipulate it so much and it is super crispy as it is a 4K display, like I mentioned, 32 inches across. It's got a five mil response time and more importantly, of course, a USB-C connection. We have that now across the board in 2020. So any laptop that you are rocking, we'll get to that in a bit. It just powers with one cable and of course you get the image in one to keep your cable management game on point because mine, of course, is always something that I need to improve on. It's one of the cleanest looking monitors that you can currently get, one of the sleekest for keeping things super minimal. So if you're in the market, of course, links down below. Maybe my only suggestion, if you had the option, because my setup is white focused, I'd love to see both the frame and the bracket come in white, but that's just me being nitpicky. I think the black does give it a nice bit of contrast over here. And to the laptop that is powering this setup, I've gone with the Matebook X Pro. It's Huawei's latest Ultrabook. I've been using it daily as my productivity-based laptop. I do give my Ultrabooks a run for their money, and it's currently my favorite this year so far, simply because it has a three by two aspect ratio, which is something that we don't really see anymore in Ultrabooks. The build quality also is another huge selling point. It's gorgeous. It's honestly on the level with Apple, which is saying something for a laptop. It feels very premium to touch. There's no bending or squeaking. It's got a nice size trackpad also for a 13.9 inch laptop. The keys have a decent amount of travel on them. Two USB-C ports, of course, one to charge and that classic USB port, which I think is super clutch. It's got a 10th gen Intel Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM. Don't expect it to play any crazy games, but keeping productive, I think most of us are doing word processing, banging out emails all the time, watching web content, and if you need anything bigger, that's why you've got it hooked up to the extra monitor to have the extra space in real estate. I think this is one of the perfect combos. And once we finally do get out of the house, I think the form factor on this laptop is what makes it clutch. It's nice and small, fits into any pack. Definitely recommend this if you're on the hunt for a laptop, especially back to school season. I know that it's August. We're right around the corner from September, which is crazy. Where has this summer kind of gone? Because I'm using the Matebook X Pro for typing, I don't need an external keyboard. I do, however, have the Logitech MX Master 3 as my main mouse. Having the luxury of sitting at a desk, I try to stay away from using my trackpad all the time. If there's one upgrade that you do need in your life, it's probably a mouse. Spend the extra money, your hand will thank you if you're sitting for more than five to six hours at a desk. Flanking the monitors and the laptop are my two Yamaha HS7 Studio monitors, and I challenge you guys to find a better looking pair that both sound great and look as good as these. 
They're probably the piece of tech that I've owned the longest. I think I've had them since my OG studio. So five to six years, I think they look dope. They fit perfectly in this white setup. There's some way cheaper options, of course, on Amazon, which I'll leave linked down below. Some of my faves, I just cannot get over how good these look. And of course, I own them already. To another accessory that lives on my desk, once again, very clean and minimal, it's the Alexa Dot Mini. I love the LED lighting over on the clock. Quickly glance at it to tell me the time, and I think you guys know that Alexa kind of powers my entire studio here. Beside that is actually over this way, my iPad Pro, gotta keep something iOS on the table. I just have my iPad off to the side, actually living in a MacBook stand. I think it actually works perfectly. Here, I usually have some sort of sports playing on the side just so I don't get too distracted. Maybe have my stocks going so I can see what's going on for the day. And beside that iPad actually is usually the smartphone that I'm currently testing, and it does sit on OnePlus's wireless ultra charger. It's got their Warp Charge 30T tech built in into a wireless charger, and yes, it does need a fan to help dissipate with heat, but keeping my devices fully juiced up on the table, and the phones that I'm currently testing, of course, the OnePlus Nord, and I'm still trying to show some love to the Huawei P40 Pro Plus. Mainly because it matches the color scheme of this video episode. I love the ceramic white. Curious what you guys have to say about Huawei devices. I know they don't have Google mobile services, but still a very capable piece of hardware. And maybe the last thing part of this setup in it lives kind of on the table itself. A ton of you have asked what this actually is. It's part of my usual set. It is simply a coffee table that lives on a table. Probably a bit of overkill, but I think it looks cool. It's from the same company, Rogue Concept, so all of the wood matches. I think it makes a dope looking backdrop. Inside of the little cubby, I usually have my Mac Mini, maybe some notebooks when I am jotting down some notes. Some of my desk buddies like Charmander or some bits of Lego. It really has no other purpose than just the aesthetic of it. But anyways, this has been my productivity-based setup. I usually spend five to six hours a day in this very seat, whether I'm editing, taking a look at photos, responding to emails to clients. I was really aiming to keep things simple, but still productive enough that I wouldn't feel like a total slouch here in the studio. Curious to hear your guys' thoughts. If you have any other recommendations or if you're looking for any links to any of these products, I'll leave them listed down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next ones or in one of my vlogs. Peace. P.S. I know all of you are gonna ask about the chair because you've asked both Insta, Twitch, kind of everywhere. This is from Autonomous. The model is called the Kin. One of the best chairs you can buy for around that $500 price range. Once again, fits into the theme of my setup. It feels great. It's nice and aerated on the back so you won't break out into a sweat. And I love it so much, I actually have two in the studio as well. Now, I'll catch the rest of you later. Peace.